Well, you're very welcome to the Better Fred Boxing Show with myself, Don McGuinness, and Anthony Crawler. And Anthony, as ever, we're going to look at the action we've just witnessed. We're going to look forward, and we're going to start at the most important point of all, that Love Island is back. So I know that it's been a big week for it you. It is. Just talk us through it. Well, it's been a bit of a slow start. Um, so I think Chloe, the new girl who came in last night, sort of ruffled a few feathers. That could get interesting, but... Um, Fans are already getting a little bit impatient, so we need something to happen and happen very soon. Did you watch Love Island over the football? You know what? I I didn't. I didn't. The two remarkable games. Unbelievable. That was one of the best days of football. I genuinely yeah. I was inspired by the, um, the Switzerland performance mm. to leave Love Island until the, uh, the day after. Later yeah. on. So I just yeah. had a double episode. Right, so she can binge on it. That's perfect. There we go. There you go. Lovely. Yeah. Well, more on Love Island later on, but we, uh, we're going to discuss what has been, apart from Love Island returning, a good week for Crawler and the whole camp because, of course, Paul Butler and Jose Burton were back in action. And both yes. Had the arm raised. Both, yeah, both in good fights, uh, good wins. Joe was really happy with them both. Um, all fair, he found a great shot to, um, to end, end matters with Liam Conroy, mm. who I think would have come all night. And Paul Butler, when you're talking about opponents who would have come all night, the Mexican knew Paul Butler thought, wow, I think Paul picked out a lovely left hook early on and a few people thought, oh, this could be an early night. But I think Joe was saying to me, he was more worried about that than the Agebe Cole fight, obviously a late change yeah. of opponent. But, oh, wow, we come all night and Paul's head after it. You could have put a glove on him, the Mexican's head at the time. But he's so tough. And I think one of, the, one of the judges went the way the Mexicans, I thought, which I thought was, yeah. was quite a bit out. But... The main thing is Paul got his hand raised and he pushes on now to uh, try and fight for a world title. And after a period of inactivity to have a late change and you get a Mexican with everything that's gone well, on. Well, it's gone on lately, yeah. It was yeah. Uh, no wonder he was worried. I mean, Paul was. Well, Paul did think straight away he thought this is going to be a harder fight than um, a Gebko, which, mm. which he's seen some with his pedigree, but um, come through. So, I mean, that was a good show, actually. But yeah, two, uh, two good wins for the boys. Well, we're going to talk Fight Zone, but before we do, somebody that featured on Fight Zone and produced a shock on Fight Zone also produced a yes. shock in Bolton at the weekend because Brett Fido completely stunned Tyrone McCulloch and again and stopped him. Now, this is an 85 veteran, 85 fight veteran. You know, Journeyman is labelled as a Wayfinder yeah. is a better title. Yes, definitely for Brett. He always has ambition. And again, I mean, what a story. Back to back wins for him now. <sighs> yeah, we was, um, it was John Harker, wasn't it, in Sheffield? Yeah, John Patrick and I Harker, John Patrick Harker on his debut. John Patrick on his debut. Yeah. And we said, wow, this is really ambitious. I mean, fair play for him. And anyway, he come up short. There weren't loads in it, but mm. Brett deservedly got the decision. And I think to be fighting, you know, Tyrone McCulloch and he sometimes can't even with a bag of rice, never mind to yeah. get the stoppage. So it was mass, you know, really impressive. And Brett's one of them, I think, now that position that he's in, if someone can get behind him, that phone's going to stop ringing for him to be fighting week in, week out. So it would mean someone getting behind him. Yeah. But um, it, I think that all just depends what Brett wants from the game as mm. well. He's happy sort of fighting regular. Like I say, there's, <laughs> he's not gonna, now? there we go, that's it, the phone stops ringing, so it's, um, he's going to be out of work for a little bit, unless he gets some kind of opportunity. Yeah, it, we've seen it in recent history as well, with, with guys that have got like kind of 50-50 records of or losing records. Yeah. I think you're like Peter McDonough, who had yeah. a, a real Indian summer and started, you know, went a brilliant spring, because he was training properly, fighting properly, yeah. and he, he kind of, the mentality changed. If you think of Chela Rendo some years ago, was, yes, was similar, he, you know, it was always a nightmare. The, uh, I remember, I think Medjie Kane, I think it was, or was it? No, it wasn't. It was, um, I forget the name, he actually beat Michael Aldis, who was a very good fighter, and he went mm. on to become world champion. He got brought over as yeah. opponent. But there is, there's so many yeah. like that, um, yeah. and they just need that direction and that sort of support, and then the training full-time, which we said, I think we spoke about it, with a lot of journeymen away fighters who haven't been able to work as much because of the pandemic, so... They're a lot fitter. They're a lot more ready for action. They're yeah. not just turning up, you know, to see see the, the fight out, mm. pick up a paycheck. They're coming with uh, intentions to win the fight. Well, Fight Zone, which uh, we alluded to before, which has been running since May the twenty first in the Fight Zone Arena, this this bespoke arena in the shadow of the Sheffield Arena, with the yep. huge canopy and all the marquees around it. It's been brilliant. It's been like a cross, as as explained, it's been like a cross between yep. a, a, a festival. Uh, and a beer garden, and it's just been yes. great fun. And everyone, it's, it's the last show yeah. at the arena this Friday. But just before we talk a bit more about this card this week, we'll just have a, a quick look at some of the highlights that we've enjoyed at the Fight yeah. Zone Arena.
Well, they were highlights from last week, but there's been some brilliant fights throughout the, the run. I mean, if you think of Matt Windle, that was a, a brilliant light fight. Unbelievable fight. fight. Neil McCubbin, wasn't it? it? Him and um, Matt Windle and Neil McCubbin, one of, I was speaking highly of it after it, um, one of the best fights, domestic mm. fights I've seen live ever, not, not in yeah. recent times. It's an unbelievable fight. But yeah, there's been some, there's been standout performances. We've seen last night with um, last week, guys, the, the pro debut of um, Bill Edenis, the Turkish Tyson. Yeah. That was impressive. Very impressive. Um, we'll see. I, and I think we said at the start of this with the fight zone thing, are we going to sort of uncover a few gems and yeah. it gives, you know, this journey from the start hopefully to yeah. the top of the mountain well, hopefully they, they, we've seen some of those performances there's been some great stuff hasn't there really if you think about it as well like Mark Leach and Thomas Asomba was yeah. technically excellent it, it yeah. wasn't like all the, the guts and thunder yeah, and, it and all the rest it of it it was a technically yes. great yeah. fight uh, and, and I, but there's been so many Cash Ali coming back uh, and yeah. a stoppage for Looking him in a European well. title yeah. fight but there's been, there's been, you know, there's been comebacks. Future. James Moorcroft, who, James who, who was well, in, yeah. in the wind and the rain, and he put on a great show. Yes. He did really well. He boxed well. Um, I've had Jake out as well on it. It was a bit different weather yeah. circumstances. But no, there's been some fantastic yeah. performances. Um, I think last week out, the lad who beat um, Irving from Sheffield, really, really impressed with him on the Glim Roads. Yeah. His lad, Sharp, Southport, very yeah, good. Keenan Wainwright. There it is, Wainwright. Yeah. Very good. I think, like I say, I think there's been some fantastic performances. The house has been great as well. I mean, the sun was shining. It was just absolutely fantastic, wasn't it? Everybody enjoying it. So it's uh, the last one of the Fight Zone Arena this Friday, and there's a, a great card again. JP Harker that we mentioned before, who had a very yeah. tricky debut against Brett Fido, he's out again. He's so there. Nice, Good. quick turnaround for yeah. him. So he, he can't he, he can't dwell on that dwell too on much. That, he's got yeah. to get out. Zach Miller from Manchester that you'll know yes, well. Zach he's out again. Zach he's well. a character. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, Good guy, Zach. Hannah Bagley, who I know you know through sparring Rhiannon, your fighter. Yes, we did a last spar with her. Um, and as she you knows, she looks really well. She's improved an awful lot. Um, she comes off the white collar scene, but she's been working hard and um, she's got a professional debut. She uh, she can't wait for that. Again, the women's game, I think week in, week out, we've uh, mm. been seeing it. And it's good, that's a nice addition. And there's some other, you know, some yeah, other like some... Big Jack Massa, obviously, yeah. we're going to get onto that. Um, I've, he's been down at the gym, him and Holtier Burton have some good rounds. I bet they do, yeah. I mean, obviously, the, the big cruiserweight, it's a European title fight as well. There's also the likes of Josh Holmes, Holmes Dan Catlin, talented, very Reece talented. Edwards from Wales, who's a yes. real talent, and Ian Martell, who's another really exciting yes, we've one seen him early on, haven't we? Yes. division. Yeah, yeah we have. Um, I'm looking forward to that. You say, I know from a local point of view, Rob Rimmer is doing a fantastic job. He's got two lads on him, Josh Holmes, who I like a lot, mm. and um, Jack Massey, he's going to be looking to, I know he's in a title fight, He's going to be really looking to push on now for um, you know a domestic title. He come very close with Richard Riappo. They thought that yeah. they could have done enough. Um, he's going to be looking to go down that avenue. Yeah, you're going to miss the arena. I am going to miss the arena. Oh, you're there yes. on Friday, but it's I'm been brilliant, isn't it? I'm there for the farewell. Yeah, it's um, like you said, the beer garden. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say like uh, Caesar's Cal Caesar's Palace car park at the time. Uh, yeah, in Sheffield. But no, it's been good. It's been good. Well. Crossing from Sheffield across the pond, the weekend that we just witnessed was well fantastic for, on, yes. on, for so many fighters. But I think the standout performance you got to say was your old mate and, and your old foe, Vasily Lomachenko, who was yes. absolutely brilliant and, and again back in there as Javonta Davis as well. Yeah, I think you know first of all, yeah, I think um, Lomachenko. I said I was very confident he was going to go out there and make a statement, and and he did against Nakatani. He was a very good fighter. He's, obviously, he's coming off a career best mm. win against Felix Vidal. Um, it looked very good. There was no sign of any injury or anything like that. And now they, they made it pretty clear after it. And uh, Tiafimo Lopez, mm. the father, he was there saying it's got a weapon next ball after Cambosis. Um, it comes through that. And that's a fight we'd love to see. And I think Lomachenko, for some reason, not, not like he had to for anyone, so I think he half knows what's and reminded people uh, who were talking mm. Four Kings that he's very much around. Yeah, I mean, Davis obviously stepping up and now calling himself a three-weight world champion. I wouldn't go that yeah, far. There's no way he can do that. Josh Taylor's got no, those belts and that's that. It's, that's it. It's, and it's not being disrespectful. It's, it's not, he's not a three-weight world champion. And, no. and I think if you say he's a three-weight world champion, it's probably mm. a bit disrespectful and a bit, sort, a bit stupid, really. A bit, you're confusing people. But there's no denying. I think the thing with Davis is... is was an unbelievable puncher. I think everyone in boxing circles says how hard he gets, and you can see it. And he's shown it again to carry mm. the power up a weight. Um, I think the worry for me is sort of after it, and there's no denying Floyd Mayweather was an unbelievable businessman, 
but he's talking out we don't want to make other fighters we're not here to make other fighters great and we'll be keeping it in the the Mira mm. family the the pbc yeah and if that's the case then you know maybe your legacy is going to be affected because i think it's what I mean. I don't know. He's a free. He's not a freeweight world champion. But if he was to say that, he's well, got to be really high up on the pound for pound list. And I think potentially he is, and potentially he could possibly be a, a, a genuine freeweight world champion. But we can't. If if he's only going to fight fights from certain networks, and you've been very vocal about that, that could hinder mm. that in how he goes down. I'm not denying it will stop him earning an absolute fortune. And listen, is he good to watch? Yeah. He's mm. great to watch him because you always know he's got that one shot to end matters. Yeah, the thing is, it's, that's that would be beyond frustrating, wouldn't it? If, if everyone yeah. starts fighting within their own. I think there was an interview that done the rounds, and um, I like Leonard Elby and a lot of what he mm. says. However, he he become under a lot of criticism for saying, you know, you got to bring something to the dance about Josh Taylor, and it's like. <laughs> You've got every belt at that weight, every genuine belt at that weight. You, what, what more do you want me to bring <laughs> yeah. to the dance? And it's not a sight. Josh is a big draw. Like, bring him now, Edinburgh Castle. I'm sure it'd sell out. Um, headlined at the O2. You know, wherever he's headlined, he's not, it's not like he's someone who can't sell tickets. Mm -hmm. He packs out arenas. So I think that was probably a little bit sort of like maybe Leonard well, Elliott it's, it's a lot of nonsense anyway clever man but not done his own work no, there, yeah. I mean, all the US fighters want to fight in the UK because of, of the crowd the crowd listen so you're well, telling me it's, just, it's all games it's well Cavante Davis right? has been over before when he mm. beat Liam Walsh um, so he's, he's not like he's scared of travelling whatsoever yeah. but I think you're telling me him Josh Taylor at football ground or Edinburgh Castle wouldn't sell out mm. nah I don't I, I don't think I'm yeah, be sure that. they know that but of course you mentioned the dance before you mentioned Lomachenko and of course you've been in the ring with him but yeah. his return was pretty eye-catching and yeah and again because of that our producer Josh as he likes to do he gets his contacts book out and he's chasing yes. people all over Europe and he's hounding them and, and eventually he caught up with Alexander Khrushchev and Yes. And he didn't just ask him about Loma, he's gone through the whole, just about everything to do with Ukraine and boxing and football and everything else. So here's, here's producer Josh with a very Brilliant. special, and, and you'll know why, chat with Alexander. Joined here by Alexander Krasuk, the promoter of Alexander Usyk. Um, first of all, though, before we get on to Usyk, I want to speak to you about uh, another Ukrainian, uh, Lomachenko, who was in action last weekend. Uh, what did you make of Lomachenko's fight, first of all? Wow, that was an amazing performance. Absolutely amazing. You know, the, it looked like uh, two boxers in the ring were from different dimensions. Because uh, the normal dimension was the Japanese. But uh, a guy from an alien, from, from I don't know, from, from, from outer space, arrived to the Earth and performed in the ring that night. His speed, his skills, his... Uh, um, determination, his focus was so strong that he didn't leave a single chance to a guy. So he defeated him in every second. No, definitely. And of course, um, Lomachenko lost to Teofimo Lopez, uh, the previous fight. Uh, on the back of that fight uh, on last weekend, uh, Lomachenko, he wants that rematch. Do you think we will see that rematch? And do you think Lomachenko gets his revenge? You know, uh, Lopez's father was uh, circling around the ring, uh, like uh, giving his uh, uh, applause to, to the winner and claiming that uh, there's no other way rather than having the rematch. So he, uh, I heard it myself like four or five times, him saying that the rematch, after we, uh, after we go through Cambostas, so we're going to have the revenge. But uh, the first thing that he mentioned is something that needs to, to be uh, under serious consideration. I mean, Cambostas fight, because that's not a, an easy walk. That's something that might uh, change the plans of, uh, of the whole division. No, definitely. And in terms of um, the man you promote, uh, Alexander Usyk, um, Eddie Hearn has announced the 25th of September, um, the fight against Anthony Joshua is on. Um, what can you tell us from your side of things? Is it on and uh, where will it be? Yes, uh, everything Eddie mentioned is... Uh is about to to be announced officially because we are now finalizing the paperwork 
and hopefully within the end of this week we will we will complete everything and sign uh, and will go officially. So um, the fight, uh, the, the date, 25th of September, is the most likely date and the place, the Tottenham Stadium, is the most likely place to, for this fight to take place. Oh, fantastic news. And it's a fight that I think uh, a lot of fight fans are looking forward to. Um, in terms of Yusek, um, how, is it, how have his preparations been going? I spoke to him yesterday a couple of times. He's looking good. He's very determined. He's very focused. He worked so hard within the last uh, two months, uh, training his conditioning and uh, like making him uh, himself a uh, real heavyweight, which he is now. And uh, he's willing to start the official preparation. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen within next couple of weeks. So he will, uh, he will set up his training camp and we'll start the hard work for, 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 for Joshua. And will the whole training camp be based over there in the Ukraine? Or will, uh, when, and when will you guys travel over to England? No, there's no need to travel to England because uh, the time difference is not, uh, so is not really uh, big and uh, the climate difference is not that strong. So um, it doesn't make any sense to travel to England because he's got everything he needs here in Kiev and Ukraine. And in terms of the fight itself, how do you see the fight going? Um, do you think it's one that we could see um, go to distance? or what? And is this going to be U6's toughest fight to date? It looks like it's going to be the toughest fight for Usyk. But uh, you never know what might happen. Because uh, Usyk has his advantage in his skills, in his determination, and in... Uh, you know what? In his experience, he's much more experienced fighter than AJ. Uh, I mean, his amateur career. So uh, my perception is that uh, this fight might go the whole distance or might finish within it. I am not a big like uh, expert in forecasts. Uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, when Usyk enters the ring, that will be the toughest the toughest Usyk we could ever see. No, definitely. And it's got a nice little subplot as well. I know the uh, Tokyo Olympics, it was obviously supposed to be last year, but is now happening uh, this year. And of course, Anthony Joshua and Usyk were both victorious at the London uh, 2012 Games. So for them to both be uh, fighting for the world title, the heavyweight world titles in the year that we've got the Tokyo Olympics, it's a nice little subplot that as well. Uh, that's something that brings Olympic, uh, the, mm, the meaning of Olympic Games for professionals uh, to the highest possible level. Because two Olympic champions are going to fight for the uh, unified championship in heavyweight in professional boxing. And uh, after, after some guys uh, who are still amateurs uh, would... Uh, by that time, probably become the Olympic champions. They would be looking at that fight and making their plans for, for the future. No, definitely. And of course, um, hopefully from uh, your side of things, uh, Usyk uh, is a new world champion. And uh, that's being said on that uh, the 25th of September and the new. But before then, um, we've got another big heavyweight fight over in Las Vegas, uh, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury free. Um, how do you see that one going for, um, how do you see that one going? Well, um, I can't say too many things about the third fight because, uh, you know what? First fight showed that uh, Fury could be different. He could be playful, like he could be skilled, he could be flexible, but he uh, sometimes he can lose the focus and get knocked down, almost knocked out. Uh, but he, he has huge heart. So he will definitely uh, find... Uh, uh, fight power uh, to go through the fight. But uh, uh, the man who has power in his gloves is, the, is his opponent. Um, I just remind maybe two or three fights of Deontay Wilder who would be losing on points but would finish the fight in round 8, 9, 10 
with just one hit, just one punch, and the fight is done. So if it goes throughout the distance, Fury has to be really cautious. I cannot give you the prediction because uh, I might say it's it's a 50-50 fight. No, definitely. But whoever wins that the fight between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, if Usyk is victorious against Anthony Joshua, will Usyk be uh, wanting to fight the winner out of uh, Fury and Wilder? We have a rematch clause for Joshua. Mm -hmm. And where will that be? Will that be in the UK again or could that be elsewhere, the rematch then? It might be elsewhere, but uh, the... The will, I mean, the uh, Joshua wanted uh, it to happen. Mm. I mean, he wanted Usyk to beat him twice in a row. So we couldn't stand it. <laughs> and talk about uh, Usyk beating Joshua twice. That's, of course, uh, Ukraine versus England. We've got Ukraine versus England a bit sooner. What, what did you, first of all, make of the Ukraine performance against Sweden last night, Alexander? Wow, that was a thrilling stuff, you know. Uh, 120 minutes of an action. Uh, I'm not a big expert in, 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 in soccer, but uh, it's probably the second game I've watched within the last five years. The first one was uh, when Ukraine lost to Austria. And I said, listen, uh, why, did I, why did I watch this? There was no game, there was no play, nothing, nothing interesting happened. But after that... After the um, Sweden uh, won and gave a chance for Ukraine uh, to continue and became the opponent for Ukraine, it looked very likely that Ukrainian national team has to say thank you, but to win. <laughs> That's what they did. No, definitely. And what do you make of the game against England in Rome uh, this Saturday? Do you think Ukraine could do it? Uh, according to my experience, Ukraine do anything. <laughs> they are always an underdog everywhere. But uh, there's always a huge chance because uh, after such a, uh, such a huge victory, uh, I think the inspiration that Andriy Shevchenko gives to the team, that would uh, be the determining factor. So the guys have a, uh, have a chance. And by the way... Uh, England is probably one of the youngest team in the whole championship. Ukraine is also very young. So that's going to be an interesting, very extremely interesting um, match between two teams that are going to like perform their best performance. No, definitely. And is Jusic a big uh, football fan? Does he, is he into the football? Yes. He used to play football uh, with uh, with this uh, with the guys from from the lamp, uh, from the team. Hmm. He knows most of them in person. Uh, so does he uh, does he know um, Andrei Shevchenko? Sure, yeah. sure. And is he is he going to be wishing the team good luck? Is he is he spoken to any of the team since last night? And is he going to speak to any of the team or Andre ahead of the game against England to wish him luck? Uh... I have no idea whether he spoke, but uh, I texted after after Ukraine was victorious. I texted to Eddie and said, "Listen, man, we need, we can't lose this chance for promoting our fight. Uh, when Ukraine gonna match with uh, with England in Rome?" So he said, "Definitely yes. Let's uh, let's sign the contract until the end of Friday, and let's make it happen." Oh, definitely. Well, looking forward to the little bit of rivalry, rivalry we're going to be having uh, between uh, the two countries on the football pitch and in the boxing ring. And uh, it will be, it's going to be an interesting watch for the football and for the boxing. All right. Absolutely. Uh, regarding boxing, I can say the best thing is uh, to wish that the best man wins. And then we're going to have the rematch. Well, there you go, Alexander. And first things first, when you look at that fella, he's driving around the streets of Kiev. He's, he's given a perfectly good interview. He's, he, he could, it's like, was he juggling as well at the same time? I mean, it's, I wouldn't be surprised uh, knowing some of the tricks from that camp. But um, yeah, very cool guy. Listen, knows he's boxing and mm. um, he's part of an amazing team. Yeah, Yusek made the best man win with a little wink uh, about Joshua. But that, that's, that's quite interesting, the fact that it's 25th of September at the Tottenham Stadium, whereas yeah. Eddie Hearn has been saying, well, 
if we've got a full house, yes, it's during the football season, we've got to open everything up. If it's not going to be open, it, it can't happen. But it seems like that that is pretty much a done deal, but listening to Anthony. Yeah, it seems it like what we're talking and sort of our Anthony Joshua was talking mm. about the fight next. You'd be very surprised if it doesn't happen. And like I said, they're they're super keen for the fight. And yeah. obviously Eddie has a part of you see, you know, promotionally as well, I think. Um mm. so it's um, it's a great fight. It's a great fight. I've said it time and time again. Respect for Anthony Joshua for you know, pursuing this fight after the Tyson Fury fell one through. It's certainly a potential banana skin. And um, one of the best fights that can be made in the heavyweight division, without a doubt. Have you been to that stadium yet? I'm not. I was going to go, I think it was just before the pandemic. Mm. Uh, United took me away, I'm almost sure. But I think it's great. And I've, but I have seen, they do a fantastic pint. Um, <laughs> it comes up. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, so, it's one yeah. of those machines, they bang it on, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, um, I'll have to, I mean, I don't know if, like, your hardcore would approve that they want a pint poured proper, don't they? But I'd, uh, I'd love to give it a go. Yeah, so much uh, interesting stuff in that as well, obviously Lopez and everything else. But the football, because wow. of course England face off with Ukraine. Yes. Although, did England win the World Cup and everything else besides the other night? When, I mean, it was kind of, a, it again, it's expectations, isn't it? And, and Ukraine and will use that, you know? Yeah, of they're, course. They're taking a look at that and think, hang on a minute, they've won already. I don't know if they've won them, but the, um, everyone thinks typical England to perform like they did against Germany and then end up losing in extra time or something to Ukraine who obviously last gasp mm. wasn't it um, against Sweden for them but listen there's no denying it's it's a huge game for England but huge game for Ukraine but I mean it's a game that they expect they're expected to win the England yeah. boys um, you'd think now it's a great chance to get into the final you probably mm. wouldn't have a better chance on paper but listen the Ukraine perform there's one but then the Czech and Denmark mm. um, is the other one since some of the performances they pulled out, you just, you don't know. I think if they've got any sense, they'll get Vitali and Vlad and Usyk and Loma all on the blower to those yes. lads and try and fire them up. Them up. Yeah, exactly. Fire them up, exactly. get Papachenko to come up with the, <laughs> the game plan. If so, Gareth could be in trouble, but hopefully not. And uh, the boys march on. Yeah. Well, another development this week was the lineup was announced for the yes. zone. Now, I mean, I know the zone has been a, a talking for for a while now, yeah. of course, because it was a it was a kind of secret that wasn't out there about the split yes. sky and everything else. And now, Eddie is, has has been the main man, obviously, with with the matching the zone publicity and, and yeah. the lineup. And I suppose uh, where was your call? Did you were you out? Uh, do you what know happened? what? Sometimes where I am, the signal's not the best. Is that then. right? I think you and Eddie, so. you're like that, and I'm just trying to <laughs> no. work out what. No, it's some lineup, isn't it? It's some lineup. It's uh, from obviously the boxing point of view. I think Darren Bar, Chris Light, they've been yeah. great together for a great double act. And then um, obviously Tony Bell, you, mm. you know, he's on. He was on Sky an awful lot. You know, real sort of studies the game, loves it. And Andy Lee's so respected mm. in boxing, and I think as a pundit as well as a pundit commentator, just boxing just. So a man who's been around, Emmanuel Stewart, for so long, he can't yeah. help but some of that gold does swingle off from him and that's the way it seems. And then obviously the big talking point, um, a change in, I think Laura Wood, I think she's fantastic. Um, Laura Wood, she does a great job on the darts. Mm. So I think that surprised, that surprised people, but I think she'd be brilliant. I think the biggest surprise, no doubt. And I think this is one that then reaches out to, probably brings new fans in, is obviously Maya Jammer. I'm not mm. sure how much, like, if she's been a boxing fan in the past or not, but it's um, listen, it's it's a work, it's, it's a fresh air to um, to boxing, and it's certainly going to get more views. There's no way. Well, she's got a large following, hasn't she? And, and she has. It's, it's a huge social media. Kind of stuff, yeah, it? that's what I'm saying about a crossover. Yeah. So it's going to bring a few people over. You know, to see she do, the stuff she does with Peter Crouch and stuff yeah. like that. People, you know, listen, there's, there's no denying they're tuning because of her. Um, so if she can do that to boxing, bring new fans to it. We talk about. YouTubers, social media followings and stuff like that it is a big part in in all businesses in the world now. Well, Eddie's not been shy and embracing a bit of that, as we know, of course, in terms of yeah. promoting YouTubers and all the rest there of it. So go. he sees the sense in clearly saying, well, you know, that that's the way sense. of the world and you've got yeah. to adapt. You've got to adapt and you move. Adapt and that's it's a very new thing, the zone, and streaming's very new in terms of what they're trying it to is. do. So he's just he's trying to, you can see the sense in what he's trying to do there. Of course, yeah, definitely as a, you know, as a, a personality, yeah. for sure, yeah, without a doubt. They are going to have to be a bit thick-skinned because the, the social media warriors, they're going to give them some Oh, of course, you know, of course. It's going to, you know what, like we, we know what's coming, Those really. tweets getting yeah. dug up on Mary Jam and herself yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. But I'm sure, listen, 
before announcing Joshua fight at Weber many years ago, she wasn't expecting to be the face no, of um, no. that promotion um, yeah. in the broadcasting and uh, what that promotion will be um, using. But yeah, there's always it's going to be. I mean, even mate Tony Value, he's getting all sorts and stuff yeah. like that. But he's always been around boxing. There's always I mean, people. I think for a lot of people, which we didn't mention then, um, wrong of me. Mike Costello. Well, I was. I, his, I was. I wasn't gonna get. Yeah, I wasn't gonna not mention no, Mike, but, Mike but, because we were coming to that. He's unbelievable, and he's uh, one of the most respected. I don't know whether you would say one of the commentators, mm. not just in boxing in sports. So to have him is, he's probably the biggest scoop yeah. from a boxing pan, fan's point of view. Having Mike Costello on board is absolutely huge. Yeah. Well. It is, and the thing is with the presenters, they're, they're presenters. Now, the, you've got the experts. Now, the presenters, Laura and, and Maya, yeah. would say they wouldn't, they're not boxing experts. Of course, but they're yeah. presenters. That, you know, you have got experts in the shape of Mike of Costello. Of course you have, yeah. And, and Andy Lee, and they're going to yeah. be the commentary team. They're going to be the main commentary duo, because they've worked together on Five Live quite and that's a bit. It. And you think, you saw how good they've worked together before, yeah. how can that possibly not work? Mm. That's a... Uh, that's it's different for TV signings. from radio, which Mike has, has already said. But yeah. I mean, he is such a fountain of knowledge, and he's lived it all his life. And he in is. terms of as a boxer himself, as a coach himself, at Lynn ABC's amateur club, and yeah. then obviously all through his working life. So yeah, and, and as you say, all the aficionados are all delighted that that Mike's done that now. And yeah. it, you know, he's been at the BBC forever. He has. And now he's certainly he's certainly certainly think, choosing. Well, yeah. I seen um, an interview. I said it would take something special for him to leave, and that's what he believes this is. Yeah. He sees it as a big adventure, which we've always said there's only is. There's uncertainty mm. about it, but it's mm. got the potential to be to be huge in the, the way the world's is, moving. The thing is as well, which would have been a frustration for him, and now he knows. He knows he's got so many fights a year to commentate on, big fights. Yes. Whereas in the past with radio rights, you don't know. Yeah. You don't exactly know how many you're going to get. And you might be yeah. missing out on the big fights. It's so, very much deserved. Yeah, see the sense in all of that. Okay, Anthony, that's pretty much it. So it um, is for this week. You know, again. I feel that we should move away from the boxing again because I'm not sure it's what you really want to talk about. And yeah. We only touched upon it at the start with Love Island, but before we get to that, yes. What's happening then this week? I know you're in Sheffield. Yes, on I'm in night, Sheffield Friday night for the last one in yeah. Sheffield. Um, in the gym, I think I said it a few times. I was waiting for a date on for the girl, the trainer, Rhiannon Dixon. Yeah. Obviously with Joe, them two fighters. Um, coming off good wins, but everyone's in and, and we're just waiting. Um, just waiting now. I think shows are slowly coming back, hopefully. Um, but no, all good. What else? The amateurs after here, I'm going to get in with the amateurs. And that's it. Yeah, so, you know, life's good right now, other than the, what happened with the gym the other week. Yeah. Any developments Coaching, on that? You're getting the marquee sorted out marquee, for the kids? Marquee, yes. We're hoping to have some news in the next few days to have them back. We're using one of our friends' gyms temporarily. So we're very thankful for that, but it'd be great to have the base back there. Um, yeah, so it's the football, mm. Love Island, and uh, <laughs> boxing, what more could you ask for? Well, again, before Love Island, it's June the 30th today, it is Mike Tyson's birthday. Yes. And again, he, he's, I suppose in, the modern, in modern times, he's probably the most talked about fighter that yeah. has been in the last, what, 50 years? One of, yeah, well, one of Sugar the, Ray Leonard the, and the most Renata, recognisable faces in terms of, in yeah, the, the, the I'm global sport, reach of him sort of in the world, yeah. yeah. The global reach, and I'm not going like obviously Ali and all the rest of it. Yeah. We're talking about in modern times, he's, oh, he's yeah, without a, a doubt. phenomenon, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he's one of the most recognisable faces. Would it be mm. out of thing to say sporting history? I don't think it would be. He, no. He's that big, youngest ever heavyweight. Do you know what champion. I mean? Youngest ever heavyweight champion. Obviously, yeah. the controversy that surrounded him, the excitement that surrounded him as well. Um, I've never been lucky enough to meet Mike Tyson. Hopefully, one day I will do. One for the scrapbook. I think you have. You well, have I, done. Um, I'm not sure. I, I classed it. I, I shoved the microphone in his face. You met him. And I, you I, met him. Is, is that, is that, but, but yeah. I didn't actually get around to interviewing him because the producer cut me short and said we, the ring watch was about to happen. It was at Fury Wilder too in Las right. Vegas last year, and I, and I was about to doorstep him. I didn't know how it was going to go. I've got to say, it could have gone either way. It could have gone. But that and probably then, added and to I, the. I, 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 Got eye contact with him and I, I thought I'm in here. You met him, Dom, you is met him. Is that right? Yeah, well, we're best right, mates then. I'm we not saying mates? you went to his um, house or like hangover style or anything like that, but yeah, you've met him. Yeah, mates, mates. Friends. Acquaintances, Who's yeah. Friends? Okay, so Love Island, what happens yeah. this weekend? It's a big one, obviously. Bit of a, everyone was left on a bit of a cliffhanger last night yeah. on Chloe's really? decision, who, what right. lad she was going to pick. That's going to ruffle some feathers. Um, I think we will see some new additions. Yeah into the villa because no like say the time, first i don't think we have any boxes this time mm. obviously in the past we've had um tommy tommy, tommy fury we had idris virgo yeah. i'm trying to think of him sure jack fincham 
Right. He's now going to have his pro debut. I like Jack a lot. Uh, so yeah, there is there is um, yeah, a, a pass me boxing. Yeah. So you won't be surprised if someone pops up. Again. No, you're not getting involved in that. You're surely you're just a, the biggest fan, number one fan. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Just a fan. Okay, doke. So it is the last fight zone at the fight zone arena this Friday night. But again, we'll bring you all the action, all the highlights from that. And again, as it just keeps coming again there's going to be more fight cars obviously announced yeah. as we're going along it's going to be a busy summer i think once the zone gets gets going as yes. well over here okay. so uh, that's it for now though anthony so uh, it is you can enjoy the sunshine and the euros we will we look forward to it. we'll be back next week and with that thank you very much indeed this is the betfred boxing show mm -hmm.